So today I'm going to show you how to do a face swap. A lot of you have probably seen these different face swap memes. They're pretty funny. Here's a couple examples uh, that I've got of them. Uh, it's what known as a meme, one of those little internet things people kind of pass around or remix and interpret. This one's pretty nice. You got the characters from Twilight and their faces are all from the same image, but they have been swapped. Uh, here's another great example. We got Brangelina and Clearly, you kind of see what's going on there. So they're kind of fun, and uh, there's a couple little Photoshop tricks you can do to do this to make them look real nice, and it's not too difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and just give you a quick tutorial on that. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is you wanna find a picture, and you can take it from two, you know, two pictures of where it's just that person by themselves, and then switch it, but it's really great when you have uh, two people, two or more people in the same picture, and uh, then the lighting is the same and you can just immediately kind of swap them together and uh, it's kind of fun. So what you want to do is go do your Google image search which we covered in the last lesson and make sure that you have it set to large and you're going to get the higher quality images and you want to look at something where they're both doing something kind of similar with their face. So like this one for example where she's covering her face and she's looking like kind of more directly towards the camera where he's looking in profile view. This would not be a good image to use because it's uh, their faces aren't going to line up. Um, like this one again, yeah, with their face covered, not so good. This one's okay. They're both kind of uh, like he, they're both kind of looking at like a similar angle, even though they're like he's looking towards the left of the image and she's looking towards the right. Uh, they're both in profile view. This one's also okay because they're both their heads are just tipped a little bit, like almost equally. And this one's actually pretty great because they're both looking almost directly at the camera. This would be a pretty easy one to do. Um, again, look at your pixels here. Make sure you get a nice high quality image. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with this one. So I click on it. Make sure I click full size image. Get that complete full image. Click on it and drag it to the desktop. Okay, did that work? There we go. Kind of drag it to the desktop. Okay, I'm gonna control click on it, do save image as, and I'm gonna save it to my desktop. I'm gonna call this Bieber Gomez, right on the desktop. Okay, you see it came up here. Now I can go into Photoshop, and I've actually already got that image open here. Um, what I'm gonna do is um, go through. And I want to start off dealing with my layers. So I go over to my layer panel here. Let me just close this up. Uh, I go over to my layer panel here and I want to right click on it or hold down the control key. It's the bottom leftmost key on the keyboard. Hold down control, go down here and click on duplicate layer. And the reason for that is if anything were to go wrong with this while I was working on it, if I made a mistake or something like that, then I've always got a backup there and that's locked. So I don't have to worry about anything going wrong and then messing stuff up. So, got my background image. I'm gonna work on background copy. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go through and create a new blank layer because I'm gonna paste one of their faces onto that new blank layer. And I'm gonna start off with Justin's face here. So, I wanna go over to this tool called the Clone Stamp Tool, okay? And I want to bring that over here. And you can see it's got a little circle. It's kinda of set up like a paintbrush. But if I hold down the Option key, you can see it changes to a little target, right? And what I'm gonna actually do is I gotta make sure I'm on the layer with Justin on it, background copy, go with my stamp, clone stamp tool, hold down option, and target, and I'm gonna target his nose, okay? And I clicked just once, just target, one click, okay? Now you can see when I move that brush around, it's got that little like uh, thing orbiting it, little like sphere coming after it. That's actually gonna start painting from his nose all the way around but I don't want to paint on the same layer. So I want to switch to my new blank layer. And then I'm just going to paint this anywhere because I'm going to end up moving it. And I'm going to start painting out. And you can see that as soon as I click, there's a little like a plus sign that appears on his nose. And that's the target. That's the uh, source, right? And now this thing behaves very much like a paintbrush. Except for that it's just copying wherever it's targeting it. And I want to try to go over, you can see I'm looking where that plus sign is. I want to pretty much just get his face. I don't want to come up here and get too much of his hair. If I do, that's okay. And I'm going to show you how to deal with that in a minute. 
You can see also it came off the edge here and got some of that kind of wall shadow background kind of thing. But I mostly want his face and I might want to go down just to the edge of his chin. And that's pretty good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'll make sure that's fully bolded in. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to go and create another layer and I want to get Selena's face. So I got my new layer here. I got to make sure to go back to the background and target with the clone stamp off of the background. If I target on layer two, there will be nothing there. Okay, so hold down option, click on her nose, it's a good central point, and then I want to make sure to switch back to layer two. If you don't switch layers, again, it's going to be a big headache. Now I'm just going to paint her face down here. Okay, and this is exactly like what we just did. Her face comes out. Again, I don't want too much hair, too much background, but I just want to come down to her chin, make sure I get all her facial features, a little bit of her cheek. And that's pretty good, okay? So now I've got both faces, and I wanna go over here and I wanna label my layers. I can turn this off and make sure layer two is in fact, oh, double click, I wanna double click right on the words. Layer two is Selena, layer one now becomes Justin, and this is background copy, it's fine. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna take my move tool here, and I want to make sure I'm on Justin's layer. I'm gonna put his face on her body. So I'm gonna drag this over here, and you can see I lined it up as best as I can. You can see the jawline right here. I got it to line up pretty good. That's actually a pretty good rule of thumb. Sometimes someone might be a little further in the background or someone might have a larger head. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to adjust the size of it. And when you're on this move tool here, you can go over to show transform controls. I've already got that on. And you can see it's put these little boxes all around in the corners. And you can actually stretch and resize a little bit if you need to, or if like her head is tilted a little bit, I can go up here and I'm gonna actually just put it on the side so I can compare them. Uh, if I move the cursor right outside of that corner one, you see on the corner lets me resize, but right outside of it, it lets me actually rotate it a little bit. Let's just tip his head a little bit, bring it back on there. And I can put it in the ballpark and then I can actually use the arrow keys on the keyboard just to nudge it like pixel by pixel just a little bit. And I'm just kind of driving it, steering it right in there. And that's actually not too bad, okay? So now I'm going to hit return because I just did a transformation. Otherwise, it won't let me do anything else, okay? But let's apply the transformation. I'm going to turn the transform controls off for a minute. And you can see I've got part of that background from over here coming off here. There's like the splotchy part by the chin. Some of his hair is mixing with her hair. It looks kind of funny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my magnifying glass tool here. And I want to click and hold down, drag out a little box around this area. It's going to zoom in, okay? Now from here, what I'm able to do is use my eraser and just use that to touch it up. Again, I got to make sure I'm on my Justin layer. Otherwise, I'll be erasing stuff I don't want to. So I click on my eraser, and I've set my flow here to 4%. If I set my flow really high, you can see it does really sharp edges. It just cuts right through. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. But if I set it to 4%, I'm actually gonna turn off my background layers and show you. Uh, with it set to 4%, you can see it erases really softly. You can almost like have it used, uh, you can kind of polish an area and kind of blend an area. And I'm gonna do that with background copy on so I can sort of see just where I need to do it. I know I wanna make her hair come through here and get rid of that smudgy background. Okay. If you want to adjust your brush size too for the eraser, you can click here and adjust master diameter. I'm going to make it less, make it a little smaller. I'm going to go through here. And you can zoom in even further if you feel that you need to. But I feel like i got a pretty good control on here. Polishing it with that 4% brush, 4% eraser brush. Try to clean those edges up just a little bit. Okay, and then the side of the face here, Make the brush a little bit bigger. You can also use the brackets that are like uh, right up above the, uh, right below the plus and minus key on the keyboard. And I want to just come through here and polish that so that their skin blends a little bit. And just try to get that all nice and soft around there. And now I can do command minus to zoom out or command plus to zoom in. Oops. Or I can just double click on the magnifying glass. It'll bring me back out. You can see that's actually not too bad. Okay. Now I want to take my move tool, grab her face, and oops, see that was on the wrong layer, it was on the Justin layer. So I'm gonna undo, click on the Selena layer, 
Now I can move her face up here and I want to put my transform controls on and I want to rotate her face so it's about, you can see like his mouth and her eyes rotate about like that. And then I got my, the size of it's pretty good. So I'm gonna bring it into place, nudge it with the arrow keys. It's actually not too bad and then I'm gonna hit return. I always gotta do that at the end of the transformation. Now I'm gonna turn off my transform control so I can see better. And you can see the jawline's a little funky here, so I'm just gonna have to do some tricky erasing. So I'm gonna go back to my magnifying glass, click and drag over here, just select her face, zoom in real close, go back to my eraser, still set to 4%, real slow. And I wanna polish out, again, make sure I'm on the right layer, I wanna polish out that extra jawline, right? Okay, getting rid of that literally uh, extra chin. All right, and you can see his jaw now is starting to show up from underneath that. And yeah, get rid of a little bit of that. Now it's, you can see it's almost like magic the way it overlaps. You can see some of his, his face and her face are starting to blend real nicely. And I'm gonna get rid of this piece of her hair here because that it's just a little awkward. It's going to be a little tricky. It's coming on top of the eyebrows there. Oh, you can see his eyebrows starting to show there too. If I've gone too far, I can take this tool called the History Brush and I paint on it and it actually paints things back to how they were. All right. Okay, so now it's got a little bit different there. I'm going to come in here with the eraser. Just kind of polish it a little bit. Okay. Maybe we'll add up some more of his eyebrows. No, I don't like that. Undo. So remember, you can always undo if you do Command Z. Uh, if you want to continue to go back, you can do go up to Window, go down to History. And you can see here, it actually shows the entire history of what I've done. I can click back to different stages in that in my project and kind of see. But right now, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Um, I want to go through and polish this here a little bit more. That jawline just cleaned up a little bit. It's actually starting to look pretty fantastic. Get rid of some of this extra hair here. Okay. And I'm gonna you know, try to clean up this edge just a little bit. It's looking all right. All right, now I'm gonna double click on my magnifying glass and bang, just Lena Gober. Right, celebrity couple extraordinaire. Again, I didn't save during the process of this, but you always want to make sure to do save as, save as a Photoshop. Just lean uh, two. This is the second one I made today, and make sure to save that frequently. And then uh, go ahead and get that posted up on your blog, and we're going to cover that in another tutorial here in just a minute. Okay, thanks for watching.